Hello once again, this is Pastor Shane Okimoto with Waikia Baptist Bible Church and this is the sermon for September 27th, 2020. It's I think it's been really good for me working here from Idaho. Uh, maybe not for my lungs with the air quality over the past couple of weeks, but it cleared up today. Hopefully it'll be clear uh, for the rest of my time here. But also it's been really good seeing old friends uh, and just being able to have a change of scenery for a bit. Uh, this should be my last sermon from Idaho unless something unusual happens. But I plan to be back in Hilo in mid-October. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll have to quarantine when I get back, but we'll see about that. I, I am looking forward to the guest preachers that we'll have over the next few weeks. Uh, you won't be completely rid of me during that time though because uh, I'll be doing the announcements. It's just a lot easier for me to just do them and upload them than try and coordinate with someone else. Uh, but other than that, I'll be on vacation and I look forward to being back in Hawaii after that. But for right now, let's look to God's Word for direction. So grab your Bibles and pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for uh, our time together. Thank you for your Word that you feed us with, Lord, that you desire to lead us with and just show us who you are more and more every day. Open up our hearts and minds with your spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, if you are around me at all uh, before I came up to Idaho, or pretty much if you are around me just like any day, I tend to talk a lot about food, and I talked a lot about the different kinds of foods that I wanted to eat when I got up here to Idaho. Uh, Sylvia actually heard me making plans with some friends last year before we took a different trip, and she remarked afterwards, all of your plans seem to surround food. And I'm like, how else do you plan a trip? I just don't understand that statement. Um, and Lynn said, oh yeah, you need to go and eat at Arby's. So I actually took a picture of Arby's food and sent it to her this past week. Uh, Arby's wasn't super high on my priority list, but it was really good. Uh, but what was really high on my priority list and was actually the very first place that I went to when I got off the plane in uh, Boise uh, was Buffalo Wild Wings. You know, Buffalo, I've always enjoyed eating there while I was still living here from 2012 to 2015. And I still look forward to their chicken wings. I, and I was looking through their menu online and I noticed that they have a new menu item, a special item, uh, special wings. They are called cauliflower wings. Now, if you don't know what cauliflower wings are, they're, they're kind of exactly what they're, they sound like. They're, they're cauliflower that are prepared a certain way and then they're sauced and people say, yeah, they taste like chicken wings and they're really good. Uh, and they told me, I, I don't know of anyone who ordered it from Buffalo Wild Wings, but I know that there are recipes out there that other people have cooked or made or tried and they say they're pretty good, but at this point, I just can't do it yet. You know, I know that they are a healthier alternative, but I kind of want my chicken wings made out of like actual chicken wings you know perhaps sometime in the future I'll try them but not just yet and I know that substitutions like this can be okay in certain situations like this one because they are healthier alternative uh, but honestly you cannot beat the real thing which brings us to our sermon passage for today we'll be reading I'm going to be reading from Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 to 17 where Paul talks about the makeup of believers and how no substitute will do in place of the real thing. So Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we are continuing through the Vision Emphasis series. The guest preachers will continue this theme as well, but this is going to be my last sermon on this theme at this time. Uh, and you should know this by now, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And I think you probably even know the question that I'm going to ask. What is the vision of Waikia Baptist Bible Church? Build the body of Christ. 
build the body of Christ. And we've gone through a number of passages talking about building the body of Christ in different ways. And here is another one from Colossians today. Uh, and Colossians is a letter by Paul to the church in Colossae. And he wrote Colossians mainly to refute heresy that had been popping up in different parts of the church. And now we don't know exactly what kind of false teachings had emerged, but whatever it was, what they were trying to do is they were trying to pass off cauliflower as chicken wings. And they're not just presenting a healthier alternative, but they're trying to pass off their teachings as something that it's not. And so what Paul is doing is he's bringing the readers back to what they need to be built upon, who they need to be built upon. Uh, so exactly what the false teachers thought, that's not really that important. What really matters is Paul is simply bringing people back to Jesus Christ. And he's been doing this from the very beginning of the letter. You know, he equated Jesus Christ with God from the very beginning of the letter. He establishes that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. So what he's telling them is instead of giving all of this attention, giving in to false teachers, we, we need to know that Jesus is the head. And the readers need to build the body of Christ through Christ. Build the body of Christ through Christ. Now I say that, and it may sound kind of redundant, but it's so important to remember that you cannot have the body of Christ without Christ. Kind of like you cannot really have chicken wings without chicken. The body of Christ needs to be built through Christ. You know, each verse today that we read, 15 through 17, mentions Christ or it mentions Jesus. And what it does is it reminds us that it all comes back to Him. You know, each member of the body of Christ has the responsibility to help build the body of Christ. You know, our interpersonal relationships with one another, especially those within the church, they should be driven by Jesus Christ. Because with Jesus as our head, when we let Him lead our actions and our words, we're going to draw closer to Him and we're going to lift one another up. We build and we strengthen the bonds between one another and also between us and the Lord. Uh, and we do this when we form a cohesive unit, a cohesive body, and we will not fall for the treachery of false teachers. That's why it's so important to build the body of Christ through Christ. And so as we get into these verses, uh, let me just state the first half of chapter 3. Colossians is actually a short book, only four chapters. Chapter 3 focuses on uh, some final instructions uh, and you know, really individual, inner individual aspects of uh, a person's spiritual walk. The second half, which actually begins in verse 12 and runs through our passages to through our passage today, what it does is it shifts the focus from interactions uh, with just within ourselves to interactions with other people. Uh, and it's important to do this because we haven't been put here on earth to do everything on our own. We have been created to rely on God and His body. That's why the first thing that we need to do, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now yes, this is an internal thing, but we're going to see how when we allow the peace of Christ to rule in our hearts, how it flows out into our relationships with everyone else as well. So first, let me talk about this, this verse. This verb rule, this is often a verb that refers to the job of an umpire, you know, a person who makes important calls uh, in, in the game. You know, as a sports fan, I know a little bit about umpires. I've been complaining about the referees. I've, I complain about umpires when I watch uh, baseball games. A lot of sports have started back up. So I disagree with umpires often. I understand that they have tough calls that are made really in the heat of the moment, and they have a difficult job. But uh, at the same time, I also have to admit that they get most of the calls right most of the time. There are a few bad umpires out there, not too many of them, but a few bad ones, and I know their names, and the reason why I know their names is because they're really egocentric, and they're on a power trip, they kinda wanna make it all about them. Which also applies to this analogy here, because what is ruling our hearts? What is our motivation for our decisions? You know, because we are faced with important calls that we have to make every day. How do we make these decisions? Is it all about us? Do we want people to look at us? Are we on an ego trip like these umpires that I always complain about? Uh, or are we like most of the world that's just looking out for number one, only caring about ourselves? Or 
do we realize that we have a higher purpose? A higher purpose to build the body of Christ. And in order to do so, we cannot let our own judgment, our own emotions, our own feelings rule our hearts. Instead, we need the peace of Christ guiding us, helping us to umpire and rule our lives. We need someone smarter than us to guide us. So how do we let the peace of Christ rule in our lives? Well, understand that peace in the Bible, it rarely refers to the absence of war, but what it mainly refers to is being in right relationship. You know, and that's what Christ does for our relationship, first and foremost with God. He, he, his sacrifice for us allows us to be forgiven and able to dwell with God the Father. But not only being in right relationship with God, Jesus Christ can also put us in the right relationship with those around us. Because if we are in the right relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we will also seek to be right and at peace with others as well. So, and I'm not just talking about, you know, seeking to placate people or just avoiding conflict because that's not what true peace is. You know, even if people may not agree at first, when we all let Christ's peace and his righteousness rule in our lives, what we're going to see is Christ is going to bring us together and we will be witnesses to what is right and good, building the body of Christ the right way. You know, this needs to be what leads our hearts. Like I said, not just how we feel, not just our emotions, because we can't always trust our feelings. We need to let Jesus Christ uh, lead our entire life and our entire decision-making process, because He is the only one who knows and does what is right. So are we letting Christ and the peace that He brings, the peace that He brings between us and God, as well as the peace that He can bring between us and those around us, are we letting Him guide all our decisions? Hopefully we are. And that's why Paul follows with the outflow of this and tells us this is the reason for doing this. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. You know, Paul emphasizes that this peace is not just an individual experience, but it's a corporate one because we were all, as members of one body, we were called to peace. And throughout this section, Paul uses the second person plural for all of the verbs. So he's talking to everyone, you all, all of you, you all were called to peace. Peace with God and peace as members of one body. If Christ called us to this peace, He can bring it about. He can lead our actions if we let His peace rule our decisions. We need to let His peace be evident, not only internally, because like I said, this is inter an internal thing to let peace rule in our hearts, but it's also external in the way that it affects others. And one of the ways that our lives can reveal His peace is through thankfulness. And that's why he follows it up by saying, and be thankful. Guess what? Thankfulness will certainly affect those around us. Because not only will it help us, you know, give, giving us a better attitude, but it will help others and their attitude as well when we see that, hey, we, you know, so-and-so can be thankful in this situation. Maybe I should be thankful as well. And that will lead to building the body of Christ through Christ. And we must also let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Also throughout this section, the verbs are present imperatives. And this means that they are ongoing, continuous commands. You know, uh, another, this is another imperative here for letting the word of Christ dwell in you. You know, literally, this means to make a home in. Dwell is to make a home in. We are commanded to allow our lives to be a home for the Word of Christ. And when you think about home, what do you think about? What kind of aspects of home co come, up, come about? You know, warm, friendly place, a place of belonging, ideally a place of harmony, a place that you long to return to. And that's what the Word of Christ should be in our lives. The Word of Christ should belong in our lives. 
It should be harmonious with everything that we do. And we should return to it, and it should return to us continually. That's what the Word of Christ, how important and how close it needs to be in our lives. And Word of Christ, you know, for them, uh, the original readers, this could refer to literally the words spoken by Christ, or it could also be the words about Christ. Uh, for us today, the Word of Christ refers to the Word of God. The Bible, what we study, what we learn from, these are the words of Christ that remain for us today. The entire Bible, not just the words that he spoke, but everything that uh, Jesus has left for us because the entire Bible is his word. Jesus has taught and continues to teach us through his word. And he expects us to take, us, take it seriously. And not just take it seriously for ourselves, but to pass it on. And we do so, as it says here, through teaching through teaching, and through admonition. When we talk about admonishing someone. You know, this sounds kind of bad at first, like, oh, I don't want to admonish anyone. But we have to understand that admonish doesn't necessarily mean that you beat someone down. But instead, it carries the idea of caution or warn gently. So both of these words for teach and admonish, you know, they're for everyone. You know, once again, present participles in plural form. It's not just for a specific group, but for everyone to continue to do among everyone else. And you may be thinking, well, I don't know if I can, I have the, the clout or the ability to teach or admonish someone else. But this is a command, like I said, for everyone, because even if you are a young Christian, you can still teach wisdom because of Christ. You have the wisdom of Christ in you, and it can be manifested in different ways where you can teach other people. And even if you are an older or a more mature believer, you can still be admonished in Christ. Because guess what? You're still learning. I'm still learning. We are all still learning. But these actions only come about when we allow the Word of Christ to be at home in us. Because I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the wisdom. No one person does. Not even the greatest preacher and the most learned theologian has all of the answers. We all need to rely on Christ as the one who does. And as we learn more from Jesus Christ and more from His Holy Spirit, we are meant to pass on this wisdom. We are meant to pass on Him to those around us. But, there will come a time when we have to correct one another. And at those times, we still need to be gentle and uplifting, helping one another. Because it's not about tearing other people down and showing that, ha ha, I'm better than you, you got that wrong, I'm, I'm good, you're not. That's not building the body of Christ. And that's what it's all about, building up the body of Christ. And that really becomes evident in the next phrase where it says, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. You know, singing, this is another participle. And whenever we have participles, we need to go back to the main verb uh, in that sentence. In this case, it's dwell. You know, this singing is a way that we allow the word of Christ to dwell in us. And this is a way that the Word of Christ is manifested for all to see. And it's such a great way to build up the body of Christ. Because when we sing out these songs, you know, these songs, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, we're not gonna, I'm not going to differentiate between the three. Some have tried to. But really, these are all just songs that you know, express more than words can, uh, really what we can put into words at times. Uh, but they're all meant to glorify God. And they're all meant to glorify God with gratitude. You know, when we're singing these songs to the Lord, and we truly mean them in our hearts, it's not just for me, it's not just for you, but it's for everyone around us. These are songs that are to be shared with the entire body of Christ, to build us up, really to lift us all up. And this is just one specific example of how we can do this. And it's not just supposed to be only one way. There are so many ways. And that's why Paul ends up with saying, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. I think this is a pretty clear statement here. 
and it's a great way for Paul to wrap up this section. You know, someone once told me, oh yeah, this is one of the whatever verses, but not in the sense of like, ah, whatever. It, it's like, you know, whatever you do. Literally, in the Greek it says, and all you do. And, you know, this emphasizes that this encompasses our whole lives, whether it be our speech, whether it be our action, everything we say, everything we do, it needs to be done in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul emphasized that Jesus here is Lord. You know, and so the question for us is, do we remember that Jesus is our Lord? Do we remember it often? Do we honor Jesus as Lord? Do we ever stop and think, you know, is this in line with what my Lord wants? Because I'm representing Him. Can we honestly say that we are serving Him in whatever we do? Because it's all supposed to be for Him. You know, these are the kinds of questions that we're, we need to be asking ourselves for whatever we do. And we, when we do all of this, as we do all of this, we shouldn't do it solely out of obligation. Oh yeah, my Lord commanded me to do this. This is what my Lord tells me to do. No. Once again, it's supposed to be out of thankfulness. Whatever we do needs to be done with gratitude for all that God has already done for us. We're never going to be able to repay Him back. But hopefully out of gratitude, we desire to be in line with Him. We desire to be built up in Him. God the Father has provided salvation through Jesus Christ, a way, uh, a way to get to heaven that nothing else in the world could ever provide. God has provided Jesus Christ so that we can be in the right relationship with Him. We can be at peace with Him because He is the only way through His sacrifice and His resurrection that any of us can be made whole. You know, when we do all that we do with thanksgiving because of Jesus Christ, we're going to be witnesses to one another. We're going to be witnesses to the rest of the world. We will show each other the right way. Christ's way and fulfill his calling to build the body of Christ. Paul understood the importance of building the body of Christ, and especially in the face of false teachers. He also knew that, you know, building, it needed to be done properly. And it's only possible when done in the Lord. Building Christ's body needs to be done in and through Christ himself. Kind of like how real chicken wings should be made, in my opinion, out of chicken and not cauliflower, right? Now it's okay to have alternatives in food, especially healthier alternatives, but you cannot have alternatives when it comes to Jesus Christ. You are called to build the body of Christ through Christ, through his peace, through his word, through his name. Your actions and your interactions need to be led by Christ himself. So get your minds right, line up your actions, and solidify the bonds between members. You know, there, there are three ways that I have for you today that you can at least begin to go about doing this. First of all, do what's right in the Lord. Do what's right in the Lord. What guides your decision? Do you just do oh, whatever you feel like today? Uh, I'm just going to go with the wind, drift with the wind. Well, I'm going to do whatever I feel like. Hopefully not. Uh, you know, not that you have to have a checklist for everything that you do, but you need to have standards and guidelines. And those standards and guidelines need to be Jesus. You need to let Christ's peace rule in your heart, just like these verses we're talking about. Let Christ umpire your life. Let Christ call the shots in your life. You know, and the reason why, you're not always going to make the best decision. So understand that right now and don't set yourself up for failure by following yourself. Follow the Lord instead. Live for Him. Live for His name because He will never lead you wrong. That's the only way that you can do what is right is when it's in the Lord. And that leads us to our uh, memory verse for this week. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hopefully you got that. Say that with me now. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, 
do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. You can do this. You can take the time to think about what are we doing? What am I going to be doing? You know, because usually you're not in an, some kind of emergency situation where you have to react immediately. If you are, if you need to jump out of the way of a moving car, do that. You don't have to stop and think about that. But there are most times in our lives, we have time where we can take some time to pause and think about what's next. And we can think about, is it truly in the name of the Lord Jesus? So I encourage you, try not to just react on instinct, you know, especially in emotional situations, because if you respond emotionally, a lot of times it's not always going to be a good response, especially if it's an anger or fear. Uh, you are allowed to think about your responses. You are allowed to pray about your responses. You know, a slightly late response is better than a rash one. Don't let others pressure you to respond regretfully. So my challenge for you this week, be intentional to take actions and responses to the Lord first. Ask Him, pray about it, not just acting on your own accord. Now, what you do, what you're going to find is, when you take these things to the Lord, you'll probably find that many of these decisions already line up with Jesus Christ. But it's important to catch the rest of them that may not have lined up with Jesus Christ. Hopefully you want to do what is right in the Lord, so you can do right by those around you as well. Do what's right in the Lord. Second, continue learning. Continue learning. Who's perfect? I better put my hand down because I know that most of you have met me, and if you've met me, you know that I'm not perfect. And guess what? If I've met you, I know that you're not perfect. Uh, if, even if I haven't met you, I know that you're not perfect. Because we are not perfect, that means that we still have faults and things that we still have to learn. Continue learning. This means that you have to put yourself in a position to learn in multiple ways. You know, seek God's knowledge by getting into His Word so that He can speak to you. You know, get involved with Bible study. Set aside time for devotions. Take your prayer time seriously. Uh, but it's not just about doing all of these things. But it's about the attitude that you bring to these things as well. You need to take the time to be humble and be willing to learn. Are you willing to receive criticism? Are you willing to receive admonishment from others? Even those who may be below you. Now, first of all, we shouldn't be thinking of anyone as below us, but we do. You know, that's just part of life and part of the way that our human mind thinks at times. But what I'm saying is, don't discount lessons just because they come from someone who may be younger than you, someone who may, may be newer to the faith than you, or someone who is less accomplished than you. You need to know that God can use anyone to teach you the lessons that you need to learn. You just need to be ready to receive them. Continue learning. And lastly, teach with encouragement. Teach with encouragement. So on the other side of the coin, you are going to be called to lift others up, to build the body of Christ. And teaching is one of those ways that you are called to do so. You know, even if you don't consider yourself a teacher, you can still teach simply by the example that you live. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need to reprimand anyone, but live your life out loud for the Lord. Live with joy to be an encouragement to those around you so that they're going to wonder, what makes you so different from the rest of the world? If you do this, you know, when the time comes around where you may need to admonish someone else, it'll be received a lot better from them because no one wants to listen to a surly, grumpy old person. You don't even need to be old, you know, just any kind of person because what would that person know about living a full life? The purpose of teaching should be to educate and it should be to edify. You know, another word for build. We should be building one, one another up in the Lord. Teach with encouragement. Building your life properly needs to begin with Jesus Christ 
and His forgiveness that is offered freely to the entire world. Only Jesus can bring you into harmony with God the Father because only Jesus provides forgiveness for sins. And our sins, your sins, deserve death and condemnation. But Christ's blood, His perfect blood, covers over all of your sin and can bring you eternal salvation. It's the only thing that can. But it's up to you if you are willing to receive this free gift that He offers. You know, this is, if, this, if you desire this, if you want this, pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I know that I have fallen short of your perfection. I know I need forgiveness that only you can provide. Be my personal Lord and Savior and come and live in my life. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time, welcome to the body of Christ. You are now a born-again Christian. You know, celebrate this joyous occasion by sharing this with me and with other Christians as well. We desire to encourage you and help you move forward in the Lord. You know, only Jesus Christ can lead you. But let us point you to Him and His joy. Jesus is the only one who can bring us together to be His body. Don't settle for anything less. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you have been blessed by the Word of God.